Ken, how are you doing? Hi, David. How are you? <laughs> can you see me a bit better now? I can, I can see you perfectly. Before, it was just a, a circle going round and round and round. But yeah, perfect. Awesome. All right. Glad, yeah. glad to know that's working. Uh, yeah, I went on. To, I went on to my Wi-Fi here because uh, I thought I'd come off my Wi-Fi because the there's a storm here just now and the, and the lights have went off once. Mm -hmm. So I, I went onto the Wi-Fi. So if I disappear in a flash, don't worry, I'll be back. Okay. All right. <laughs> cool. Um, Ken, it is a pleasure meeting you. Um, it's a pleasure, we've David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we've, we've messaged each other back and forth a little bit. I've watched your videos, um, but it's our first time talking yeah, face I'm to face. Yeah, I'm super this excited. Is... Yeah. This is great. Um, teacher Ken, can I call you Teacher yes. Ken? Can I just call you Ken? My name's Ken. Actually, I've got a jarn Ken, but I don't know if you know the Thai language. I'm out in Thailand. And a jarn just means teacher or professor. So I call myself a jarn Ken, you know. It's kind of like a handle, you know. But Ken's my name. Please call me One. Ken. Okay, cool. <laughs> Ken it is. Ken, um, <laughs> Ken for everyone watching, uh, it's for, for a lot of them watching, it's probably their first time seeing you or meeting you as well. Sure. Uh, would, would you mind introducing yourself? <laughs> okay, I'd love to. Hello, everyone, if you can see me. My name's Ken. I'm from Scotland in the United Kingdom. And uh, I left Scotland about uh, 15 years ago. And I've been on many countries, and I've ended up in Thailand. I've been here for about 10 years now. I've been in other countries, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Bulgaria, Romania, everywhere. And I've been in, in um, Thailand now for 10 years. And at the moment, I'm teaching university graduates to work for the airlines, uh, the airlines all around the world, in the Middle East and in Asia, et cetera. So, so oh, yeah, nice. so that, that, that's where I am. And uh, I'm fairly new to IG. I mean, I've only, I was counting up the months there. I've only been on IG for about three or four months or so. So I'm, yep. I'm fairly, fairly new to this. I'm just making contact with a lot of people, you know. Wow. Okay. How are you finding it so far? Well, welcome to the community, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding it. I really enjoy it. You know, it's um, usually I, I teach face to face, you know, and there's so many different questions that I'm getting from people all around the world compared to what mm -hmm. I get here in Thailand, which is quite, uh, which kind of opened my eyes up a little bit, you know? Yeah. But um, I enjoy the IG, you know, I do videos more than images. Mm. I've got I've got no design skills whatsoever, yeah. and I try I try doing images, and it takes me about six hours to do one image. So, getting on a <laughs> video, I can do a video in thirty minutes, and there we go. You know. Yeah, yeah. How, but, how well, could, if you don't mind me asking, how yes. long does it take you to put together one of your videos? <laughs> like going... I've got it. I mean, the videos at the moment on IG are about a minute, a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Yeah. And from filming it, all in one take, probably filming it to editing it to getting it uploaded, maybe about half an hour, I think. That's that's incredibly efficient. And that's, <laughs> that's with all the, because you do have graphics. I've noticed that you've got like a like a border around around your frame, right? You've got the title yeah. at the top and, mm. and I think you have something on the bottom of your screen as well. I've got subtitles, I've put subtitles on it, yeah. Right. And... and um, mm -hmm. Are you you're are you're using the automatic subtitles on clips, right? No, 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 not at all. I've really been into um, my background's in finance, you know. But mm -hmm. before that, I was really into IT. Yeah. Um, I remember when computers first came out. Yeah. Oh, well, I must have been about thirteen or so. I'm sure my age here, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I started writing computer programs and everything, computer games when I was young, you know. And so I've really been into IT. You know, I can pick things up fairly quickly. Yeah. So um, now I've just got a template. I can just put it in and do a little few modifications, and and we're off and running. You know. Wow. Okay. That that's awesome. <laughs> you know, it, I, yeah. I remember there was a time when I was able to get my videos out in in thirty minutes or less, but you know, over time I, I started you know adding little bells and whistles <laughs> to it. You know. Um, and to the point where now you know I've got I've got a thumbnail. I've got um, I've got the subtitles, with, and I'm doing longer videos as well now. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. To five minutes long. So wow. going through the subtitles and and correcting everything that my phone's voice recognition gets wrong, oh, which right. is quite a bit. You know, <laughs> um, it it takes quite a bit of time. It's a but 
Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I, I started doing a, a kind of longer video, kind of slide yeah. videos, and it was, I think there was maybe seven or eight slides a minute long. Yeah. And that was taking me a few hours. And so I thought, right, we'll stop that and we'll just put it in one video format, you know? Yeah. And it, work, it works out much better. It works out much better, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. I love I your videos, it. by the way. I mean, they're, they're so professional looking, your videos. I love them, you know? What, really? <laughs> absolutely. Well, absolutely. Okay. All right. I love well, the way you've got the border and everything around it, you know? The, uh, on the thumbnail, as you say, when you go into your page, you, it's kind of like blurred at the side or the top, I think. It is. I, I, I love all that. It looks really quite professional, you know? I like oh, it. Oh, man. Because, I mean, well, you're, you're living in, in Thailand right now. I mean, yeah. you're not that far away from where I am. You get the chance yeah. if you haven't already. You've got to visit Japan. Um, <laughs> where where in Japan people are you? Who live here, they, they actually go to Thailand a lot for their, for their holidays. But, yeah, we don't get a lot of people from Thailand coming over here. Well, you know something, my students are maybe in their 20s, their mid-20s, and mm -hmm. most of them, I would say about 80%, 70%, 80%, love to be either Japanese or Korean, you know, Wait, Japan's okay. my favorite, or Korea, you know, they want yeah. to go to these places, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are, are, they, are they really into the, uh, the, the pop music and, and the fashion and all of that <laughs> stuff as well? And because most of the most of my students are females, cosmetics right. from Japan and from right. uh, from Korea, you know that's right. that's it. All the K-pop from Korea as well. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, everyone <laughs> they okay. go crazy for it. <laughs> All right, wow. Okay, no, I'm I'm not surprised. I'm not. I mean, it's it's very similar. I was in Malaysia uh, right yeah. up until uh, when was it? I think September last year, or sometime around then, July last year. Uh -huh. um, and I, I was there for four years, and it, it's very, wow. it's very similar. People in Malaysia are just fascinated with anything and everything that's either Korean or Japanese. And it's, <laughs> I, I know, yeah. And it's, and it's ridiculous. I mean, there are clever marketers who are, who are milking it for all they can. There, <laughs> um, there. I once saw this candy um, product. It was, it was just these little uh, hard sweets. Um, yeah. I think I think you're call, you call them gobstoppers in some parts of the, parts of the world. <laughs> but, um, so it had like um, a very Japanese sounding name, mm. and the packaging as well. You know, it had this kind of a Japanese esque sort of design to it. Yeah, but it was it was is completely Malaysian. It's made uh -huh. in Malaysia. Uh -huh. um, the the person who started the brand is Malaysian. Uh, uh -huh. It has absolutely nothing to do with Japan, but it was it was selling. You know, people were, were going the out and buying it. On it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, they, they seem to go crazy for Korean and, uh, and Japanese, you know. Yeah. So I've only been to Japan once, actually. I, I went um, about three years ago. I mm -hmm. just went, I, just, I think it was just a weekend, maybe four or five days. And I was really scared about going to Japan, you know. Yeah. I don't know from when I was growing up, people, I, I always had this impression that Japanese were really strict and, uh, and you know, I, I, always in my mind, you know. Yeah. And I thought, okay, my wife says, okay, let's go to Japan. I was like, okay. And uh, it was the biggest shock of my life going to Japan. I've mm. never met so many friendly people in my life and none of them can speak English. But yeah. they helped. I was shocked yeah. at that, you know. But they all yeah. kind of like, uh, can I help you? You know, is there anything I can do for you? You know, they're so accommodating. Really, really changed. I really got a biggest shock of my life there, you know. Yeah. Um, we got another teacher who lives here in Japan as well. His name's Stu. Um, oh, name, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've spoken to him yet, but uh, he just commented. He says, you should definitely come, come over again. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, where are you in Japan? Where, where, where are you in Tokyo or? Me? No, I, I live in uh, Nagoya, which is the fourth largest city in the country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting city in that it has a really unique, um, it has a unique character to it. It's kind of built up and developed, so it's got all the conveniences of a big city. Yeah. But it's, it's got like the population density of a, of a country, of more of a country town. So, uh -huh. It, which is it's kind of weird but it's you know i, I like it I, I love it that way because i you know i grew up in brunei uh -huh. which uh which has a population of four hundred thousand. Uh -huh. um <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> that's an entire country and you can yeah, drive yeah, yeah. from one end of the country to the other in about two hours. Wow. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to being in a place that's a lot like Nagoya where you've got, you know, um, first world technology, uh, mm. you know, easily available, readily accessible. And at the same time, you don't have to worry too much about traffic jams, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> which yeah, I kind of like it that way. Have you been to Bangkok? Did you say? No, not yet. Not yet. It's, it's, <laughs> it's on my, it's on my to-do list to, to make uh, a trip down there. Once, once, once is, once is enough. I think, you know, I mean, I come, I come from Scotland. We have a population of, five million in the whole of the country you know mm -hmm. and in bangkok there are 10 million people oh, compressed insane. into the size of you know i don't know one of the major cities you know wow like this, that is you know? insane there's like a quarter of a million taxis which is uh you know <laughs> it's just crazy <laughs> so they're, wow. they're, they're they're now building a sky train a bit like in kl and kuala lumpur you know they're building a sky train yep. all around the city now you know when you said there, there are when you're talking about taxis in Bangkok, are you talking about like taxi taxis or the little three wheeled tuk tuk things? But no, um, I'm talking taxis, you know, kind of real taxis, if you like. Okay. You know? I mean, and at some time, mm. and then add to however many taxis there are, there's there's also those the the tuk tuks running around all over the place. Well, to be honest with you, I mean, the biggest thing is taxis. I mean. Um, mm. Um, for example, if I'm driving to work in the morning, say a Saturday morning, yeah. there's less buses, obviously. And I mm -hmm. remember the other day, I, I was at last weekend, the weekend before, I was driving and I was stopped. At, I was stopped in a, a kind of jam, and the, I counted round about me. There was about twenty cars, say, and mm -hmm. out of those twenty cars, there were sixteen taxis. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's just crazy. But the tuk tuks, the tuk tuks are uh, kind of like in the tourist areas mainly. Mm -hmm. um, or or on the outskirts, but they they don't really kind of come into the main part of the city, if you like, you know. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. cool. Well, yeah. um, Ken, there are a ton of things that I want to ask you. Yes. Um, for starters, so you've been you've been in Thailand for ten years, but yeah, before moving there, you you lived in a number of other countries. Yeah, and you're from Scotland. So, how old were you when you when you first decided when you made up <laughs> when you said? You know what? I'm I'm going to pack my bags and I'm going to go to some place that I've never been before and I'm going to live there. <sighs> well, I'm only 21 now, you know, and I've been away for, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I was in my background was in finance and yeah. um I did pretty well in my mid 20s. Um mm -hmm. I, I had a finance uh, I was kind of like self-employed and I won a competition to come to Thailand. Yeah. Uh, for a month. So I came mm -hmm. to Thailand for a month and I always said, right, I'm going to come back um, to, to Thailand. And it wasn't until maybe 10 years later that I came there. Ken mm -hmm. asked, have you ever been to, to Bangkok? Yeah. Yes. And that is correct, Ali Reza. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's an English teacher. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So um, I, I had a finance business and yeah. Um, I thought, right, I'm going to, I'll put a pin in a map, where will I go? So yeah. I kind of closed my eyes, got the pin in my map in the office, went like this, closed my eyes. And Wait, are, I, you, and... are you serious? You actually did that? I thought that was only something you ever saw on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know something, I, I wasn't well-traveled, you know, I hadn't yeah. been outside Europe, so I thought mm -hmm. the world ended in Europe, you know, yeah. so it was just a map of Europe, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, the pin went into Portugal, and I thought, right, where's Portugal? What language do they speak? You know. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I bought a ticket, and two mm -hmm. weeks later, I arrived with my dog and my bags, and I ended up staying there for a couple of years. You know, um, I just thought, right, let's do that. So uh, yeah, okay. and I, th I thought, right, no phone, no television, no car. I wanted kind of living off grid. I'd had enough of working in my own business, working all yeah. the time, you know. Yeah. And it lasted about six months. You know, I didn't have a phone for a couple of months and I didn't mm. have a car for about seven months or so, you know. And but, I ended up buying a little television and I started teaching myself Portuguese from the television, you know. So. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. 
this is so, yeah. th w mm -hmm. was this you know before the internet was was a thing um so you know if, if you wanted to find mm. resources to teach yourself portuguese on the internet was that something was that an option that was available to you well david you know something i didn't have a computer i said oh, no wow. computers nothing because um about where was i i can't remember where i was i start i think i was still in scotland it was about 1998 and I thought, right, I'm going to start building websites. I think this internet mm -hmm. will take off. Yeah. You know, I think, I think it's going to be a big thing. So I started building. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I know, crazy. So I started yeah. building websites, you know, and uh, getting into building, you know, technology and stuff. So I kept, mm -hmm. I kept that up for a little while. Yeah. And, uh, and when I went to Portugal, I thought, right, mm -hmm. no computers. And uh, I just went to the internet cafes to keep in touch with people, you know. Right. Um, so to find resources, I guess there was. But for me, I wanted to throw myself into into the situation, you know. Yeah. Um, at that time, I was very kind of spontaneous and uh, exciting, if you like. So. Uh, right. I can uh, imagine. <laughs> so when, so when start, you moved started, there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you moved there, where, did you move alone? So it was just you and your dog, you said. Yeah, yeah, I had in my bags, and that was it. So, okay. uh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I got a job there in sales, and mm -hmm. uh, I would walk to work every every day. Oh, I think it was about an hour or so. It was, so. it was in the Algarve in the south of Portugal, so it was so yeah. hot all the time, you know. But oh, it was man. good fun. I enjoyed it, you know. It was really good. Wow. And then from there, the, the season kind of went down, and I thought, right, what, what will I do now? So I bought myself a little Peugeot car for about 600 euros. It was nothing, you know. Yeah. And I, I had to kind of push it to start it, you know. And I thought, right, <laughs> let's go to okay. Spain. Let's go to yeah. Spain. So, so I got in the car and uh, I don't know how the, the car got me to Spain, really. You know, I ended up in the middle of these mountains. The sky was getting very close, you know. So I was yeah. really high up, you know, and... Uh, I think the journey was about six hours, but it took about 10. So I ended up in Spain and lived there for about six years. Got a house there and, and everything. So it was pretty cool, you know? Well, so it, it seems like, well, we've uh -huh. talked about your, you moving to Portugal and, uh -huh. and then we talked about you moving to Spain. Both of them sound like they were just really spontaneous decisions that you kind of just did all on, on a whim almost. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, yeah. Did you say that's accurate? Um, Yes and no. I think I've always wanted to try. I mean, when I was at school, my favorite sub, two favorite subjects were languages and computing. Mm -hmm. So I've always been interested in traveling and seeing other things, you know, mm -hmm. even if it was just maybe in the UK or maybe in Europe a little bit. So yeah. I've always kind of done that. So mm -hmm. even though it was kind of like spontaneous, let's go to Portugal. Yeah. It was always in my mind to do something, I guess, you know. Right. Um, I moved all around Scotland, you know, in different parts of Scotland, even though it's pretty small. Mm -hmm. So, mm. so uh, yes and no, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I've, I, I'm going to ask you this. Are you, yeah. do you happen to be into motorbikes by any chance? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so, you know, so out in Thailand, yeah. I've never been on a motorbike. I'm yeah. really, really scared of a motorbike. Really scared. Okay. I prefer having it being enclosed in a cage, you know. Yeah. And, but I went on a motorbike out in Thailand, and my friend's got a motorbike, and sometimes I go in the back of his, and I think, my eyes are closed all the time, David, you know, and holding <laughs> on for... It's, I feel like it's a roller coaster. Maybe he's going yeah. 20 kilometers an hour, but I feel like it's about you know, GP, Formula One or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's one of those things. You, you, you're going to either love it or hate it, but um, the reason why I asked is that yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm into motorbikes, and, and I, used to have, I used to have two, actually. I, well, not uh -huh. at the same time, but I used to have a motorbike. Um, and, you know, there was a time when I was, I was consuming a lot of motorcycle-related content on the Internet. Yeah. Um, and... It just so happens that uh, probably we're, we're talking about what five to ten years ago. Mm. Um, people, I think Scotland was was kind of really well known for its for its back roads. I'm not, I can't remember the letter that you guys use in the UK, but I think it's like B roads or C roads. The B roads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, 
they're kind of wide open roads, which uh, don't have a lot of traffic, but you know, it's out in the countryside. So you've got beautiful scenery around you, all the lots glacier of landscapes yeah, yeah, lots yeah. Of, and lots of sheep that, <laughs> that you don't want to yeah, suddenly yeah. You know, run across the road when you're riding. But <laughs> yeah. And, and a lot of the, um, the hosts and the presenters on those shows were, were Scottish and, and they had the accent. Uh, they sounded a lot like you. So, <laughs> so I was curious. I thought, yeah, you know, like, I have this stereotype in my head. Okay, Scottish guys love motorcycles. They're like, <laughs> they're like doing crazy, dangerous stuff and risking their lives. On it. So I thought maybe you were one of them. But, no, no. Uh, yeah, but you know something? There's a, yeah. uh, there was a television program called The Long Way Round. Yeah. It was a two, two guys on a motorbike, you know, two actors on a motorbike. Yeah. And they did a documentary filming themselves going the long way around. They mm. started off in Scotland and they ended up in going all the way through the Road of Bones in Russia, yeah. um, Alaska, into New York. And mm. that actually gave me a lot of uh, motivation for, for traveling, you know. I, I watched yeah. that. They went through places like Kazakhstan, which, which looks amazing. Mm. Mongolia, which, wow, amazing, you know, and... Uh, Eastern Europe as well, which I've never been from, been through, yep. you know, all of these. So that, that kind of gave me a lot of motivation, but mm -hmm. I would never do it on a motorbike. Maybe on a tuk-tuk, maybe, but never on a motorbike. You know? okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, was really, so... I was really amazed that you're not a, a native speaker. You've got a, the most amazing voice. Oh, you thank know? you. Thank you. That means a lot. Really, really, it really does. <laughs> um, really, really, really. You've yeah. got such a smooth accent, smooth voice, really. Wow. You know, um, you should get you should get a job in um, you know in these like you know um, commercials. You know the voiceovers and stuff. You know, perfect voice for it, really, really. Oh wow, yeah, that would be like a dream country. You, you know, uh, to tell the Dom, truth, like, <laughs> I've you know one of my one of these kind of like secret dreams of mine is to do voice acting at some point. Like, really? Voice, yeah, yeah. Because and and the thing I would want to voice act like this really ruthless. Um, evil <laughs> kind of character because you know someone someone worse than darth vader if there is because you know. <laughs> the, the whole idea with with show business right it, it's storytelling so yeah you get to to play a character in a story it's like an escape from your own real world or your, your, your sure. real life so sure. you know the as a villain I get to do things that I can't imagine ever doing in, in real life. <laughs> so, you know, if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna escape, why not go all the way, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think you'd be perfect for that. Really, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, if a, if an opportunity like that does come along, yeah, please let me know. I'd, I'd totally be on it. <laughs> well, did you know that I was, that was a few years ago? I was watching. And there was this guy, he was on the side of the street, he was a down and out, you know, yeah. in America. And uh, he had a sign and he had this voice, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he had this radio voice, it was beautiful. And this, this executive stopped yeah. and spoke to him and he says, I can get you a job. And he, so he went from down and out to, to like one of the high profile voiceovers doing Super Bowl commercials and all of this, you know. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, he went from here to here. Just, you know, I guess it's just a matter of kind of being in the right place at the right time, you know. But your yeah. your yeah. videos and everything, I just I just love listening to them, you know. Thank you, thank you very much, Ken. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, oh, by the way, Stu says that I should make a, a a series on YouTube called The Evil Teacher. The Evil Teacher. Uh, I see yeah. that. <laughs> I, I, now to. Stu, actually, I kind of dabbled into that just a little bit, um, cause, uh -huh. you know, to kind of just um, you know scratch that itch, if you if you will. Um, there was a challenge by another teacher, and and by the way, um, you're gonna you're gonna find this out very soon if you haven't noticed already, Ken. Uh -huh. um, the the Instagram English teacher community is is such a a positive, mutually supportive. Unbelievable! Um, one, Unbelievable! It, I, it's really, really, really shocked me how how fantastic yeah. it is. Really, it it's and I, I think it really is just the this genre because you, you don't find this in in every genre out there on social media. There, there's a you know there's mm. some something some I guess topics or, or genres you could get into in, on social media where you're really just asking for trouble. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. There's no way in hell you're going to make any friends. 
um, <laughs> make, you, know, do, you know, making videos about other things. But but when it comes to teaching English, it's it's great. Um, you know, I've um, I've it's just bowled me over. You mean I've only done it for what three four months and. Uh, yeah. I, well, I, I, the first thing I remember, it must have been about a week, maybe three weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I made a, I made a, you know, I end up speaking to a guy that, that's really become one of my, my a, a good friend of mine online, you know. And uh, yes. I've, been, I've, I've thought there's so many teachers out there mm -hmm. that there's enough native speakers or good quality teachers to go around for everybody who wants to learn English. And that was my first, first thing I've thought, you know. Yeah, there's so there's so many opportunities for people to learn English, I guess. You know, and, uh, and speaking to everyone has just been amazing, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a teacher from Iran. Uh, his name is Saj. Uh, mm. He actually he, he's his background is in in law, so he's a lawyer, and he All studied right, uh -huh. in the UK. Uh huh. So wow. It, but but he runs a, a a social media page about English, um, mm. and he did this challenge. It was called. I think it was called the bad teacher challenge. I think you, <laughs> you can probably, you probably still find it if you search the hashtag, hashtag bad teacher or bad <laughs> teacher challenge. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, and, and people took turns uh, making their posts and then tagging other teachers in the community to, you know, and it kind of just went around. So when it was my turn, uh, you know, I decided to go all out and I had fun with it. I, and uh, I still get people messaging me and, and saying, hey, man, I love that bad teacher video that you did. And I was like, yeah, I know. I had, <laughs> I had fun making it. Yeah. I'll need to check that out. Uh, you know? But, you know, it's been on my mind. Um, oh, by the way, there's the English experience. Um, we've got uh, hey. Tino. His name is Tino Trevor. Uh, I think right. he's from the UK, but he now lives in Brazil. Um, All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tino. Another great teacher that, that you should definitely get to know. <laughs> If you, if you don't know him already. Cool. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so, and I've, it's been on my mind for the longest time. I, I've been wanting to make a sequel to that bad teaching video. <laughs> I might, you know, thanks to Stu, I might actually get around to it. I'm, I'll have to check this out, you know. I'll need to see yeah. what it's all about, you know. Um, next question that I have for you. Ken. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you went from, from Scotland to Portugal to Spain. Mm. Yeah. And how long were you in Spain? Well, I actually become based in Spain, in the mm -hmm. south of Spain, in Andalusia, yeah. and um, I loved it there, I loved it. But then from there, I actually ended up going back to Portugal, yeah. and working in Portugal for a year, so I would kind of commute every, mm -hmm. uh, you know, backwards and forwards, and then I moved to Italy, yeah. um, and Bulgaria, but so although I was based in Spain, I was kind of still moving around. So in total, I think it was about six years in, mm -hmm. uh, in the south of Spain, you know, and I learned... I learned to speak um, a little bit of Spanish while I was there as well, you know. That's cool. Wait, so, so how many languages do you speak and how long? <laughs> well, well, to be honest, my first language is obviously uh, English, you know, and uh, at, at home we, we, we speak a kind of dialect of English, which is Scots language. It's, it's kind of like English, but also mixed with kind of like Scandinavian languages and Germanic mm -hmm. languages, etc. Um, so when I went to Portugal, I could have basic conversations, not much. I could go to the supermarket, I could talk a little bit. Um, then I moved to Spain and I, was, I forgot my, my Portuguese because the language is so, different, uh, so similar. Yeah. But the accent is so different. You know, um, Portuguese, um, Portugal Portuguese is very kind of like a German accent. It's very strong and... Sha, 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 very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and Spanish is very, blah, 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 blah. it's kind of like wavy. <laughs> it's a wavy sound, yeah. you know. So even though the words and the vocabulary are very similar and the grammar, yeah. etc., I just forgot all my Portuguese. It just went out. And uh, so I started trying to pick up um, Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I got, I was about there for about three years and I could have basic conversations. But I could never get past this kind of block here. And it was all about grammar. I couldn't mm -hmm. understand Spanish grammar. Yeah. And one of my friends said to me, Spanish friends, they said, tell me about the, the perfect tense. And I thought, what's the perfect tense? I have no idea. You know, it's yeah, yeah. no idea. Yeah. And uh, we never get taught this at school, you know, in, in, in the UK. 
Yeah. So, and that was, it was at that moment I thought, right, I need to find out about my language, my own mm. language. So I started, um, you know, um, I started reading all about English, how it's all constructed and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really, really hit. Once I understood the perfect tense, the passive voice, I really began to understood, understand Spanish. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is how we say it and everything, you know. So, um, so I spoke Spanish and then I moved to Italy and I thought, Italian should be easy. I speak Spanish, I know Portuguese, Italian should be easy. Yep. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> the accent, my goodness. Da, da, yep. da, 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 da. Oh, yep. my God. I just couldn't understand it at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Stu, yeah. Stu said he had the same snag with Japanese. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, Stu, Stu lives in Japan. He's, I think he's been here for many years now. Um, right. So I've, I'm going to assume that Stu is fairly fluent in Japanese, that, you know, because uh, cause he works here. He works here as uh -huh, well. So. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How's your yeah. Japanese? My Japanese. Um, is spoken, written, or reading? Re reading, <laughs> right? <laughs> I can imagine the, the written Japanese must be... Uh, oh, must man. Be so, uh, yeah, because it's, it's a mixture of two languages, isn't it? It's, you've got, like, the, the Chinese part and you've got the Japanese part, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Like, whoever came up with that, with, with the Japanese written language, man, I would love to sit down... <laughs> You know, <laughs> sit down with, with, with a coffee and, and just kind of interrogate the guy and be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> like, what exactly about this language system made sense to you when you came up with this, you know, is, is what I'd love to ask <laughs> him or her. Um, it just so, seems way out. Mm. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I think it was something along the lines of, okay, we have Chinese. Right. Yeah. And Chinese, uh, Chinese is complicated enough as it is. It's yeah. um, where every word is represented by a character. It's a hieroglyph yeah. hieroglyphic language. Yeah. Um, so then uh, this dude decides, hey, you know what? Let's add a phonetic system, a phonetic script as well, just uh -huh. so that we can kind of fill in the spaces in between the Chinese characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not a bad idea in and of itself because it means that now you can actually sound things off, right? Yeah. Right. But then he goes, okay, now we have this really great system where we can just spell out anything we want with just a, a fixed number of characters. It's going to be really simple. But nah, let's just keep the Chinese <laughs> characters anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's just keep them just to, just to confuse foreigners. You know, make it make it impossible for anybody to move here and and you know be able to assimilate and, and live here. You know, let's do let's do that instead. Um, uh, and they've, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, and they've pulled and whoever it was that that decided to do that has pulled it off quite successfully. Uh -huh, it, it, uh -huh. I think the most intimidating thing for anybody learning Japanese has to be the reading and writing part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the same out here in Thailand, you know. Yeah. Um, Thailand, uh, the characters, etc. the sounds are nothing like what we have in, in the West, you know, in, in our kind of languages, you know. And, and it's and Japanese a tonal language, right? Oh, no, it's not. Fortunately, it's, it's not. not. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, is it true that the Japanese language is kind of like, um, it's kind of, it sounds a bit like Spanish, is that right? Someone, someone told me that the kind of phonetics are a bit like the Spanish language. Yes, yes. Uh, their phonetics are just like Spanish um, in that they only have five vowel sounds. Um, All right. A, uh -huh. e, U, A, O. And uh -huh. they, they have a system for romanizing um, their words uh, so that you can... And, and, and it's really straightforward and simple. So if you, if you see a Spanish word, you, you would read it exactly as it's spelled, right? And it's mm. the same with, with Japanese. If you see a Japanese word... Um, that's been written in the Romanized version, you would just sound it off and it would be pronounced exactly how it's spelled. It's, it's, right, right. it's purely phonetic. Um, right. And English, as you know, is, is non-phonetic, so you know, <laughs> you, we, we just spell things for... That's how they're any, spelled. Just, just because... <laughs> Just depending on our mood on the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Eng uh, UK, Eng British English and American English? Yeah. And I always try and say the American English is so much easier. You know, is it's it? the E. Really? 
Yeah, I, I, just in my mind, I've got this. I've got this idea that the, you know, the the, the spelling is going to be easier. Like the, they don't say O U R, for example, at the end of yeah. You know, when there's it's just straightforward O R, which is perfect. You know. Yeah. Um, I guess ITE, they came up with ITE instead of IGHT kind of thing as well, you know. Mm. So, so I, ju I just feel that the American English is probably easier than the, than the English English, if you like. Actually, you know? Yeah, you know what, now that I think about it, I think you're right. You're, you, you're right. It, even with the, the I-Z-E thing, because that's how, yeah. that's, you know, that's exactly how, how the words are pronounced, right? We pronounce exactly, I's, exactly. not I's, right? So, exactly, yeah, that exactly. makes sense. Exactly. I think British English must be kind of the advanced level or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea. But the, the Thai language is very tonal, you know, so yeah. what, uh, if you see it written down, like the word cow mm -hmm. can mean rice. Yeah. No, it's a like cow for rice, cow for rice. Mm -hmm. But cow, it's just, there's six different kind of levels, you know. Six? There's six tones. Yeah, cow, 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 cow. So uh, it can mean news, it can mean mountain, it can mean white, it can mean rice, it can... Oh, so oh, you've wow. just got... So it's kind of like when I first came to Thailand, uh, mm -hmm. I taught in a, a, um, a school with, you know, first-year students, I think, about 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. And uh, I had an assistant teacher, and I would try and speak a little bit of Thai, you know, and they would all start laughing because obviously I'm saying rude words instead of the real words, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> No, but but you can get away with it because you know, everybody knows that you're you're learning it, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, only so much you need to stop it, you know. <laughs> I guess I guess in a, when, you, when that's probably a good one of the advantages of a, a tonal language like Thai or, or even Chinese, the because mm. because in Japanese there are a lot of homophones, mm. um, like there. You know, I think there there are countless words which have which which have a reading that goes she, like S H R mm. she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think the reason for that is that oh, okay, I'm not. I, I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. Where do I start? <laughs> That's how complicated Japanese is. So, <laughs> so for any given Chinese character in Japanese. Uh -huh. um, because it is borrowed from Chinese, it has mm. several readings. So All right, uh -huh. it could have as many as eight readings. Um, mm. and, and those eight different readings of that same character would depend on how it's being used and the other characters that are being used together with it. Wow. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. Um, and very often, I, I have this application that I use to, to learn my Japanese Chinese characters. <laughs> uh huh. And one of the exercises that it gets you to do is um, it'll show you the character and you've got to tap on all of the correct readings of it. Mm. And this little trick that I have for making sure that I get at least one of them right is if I see she, even if uh -huh. I'm not sure, I'll just tap it anyway. And, you know, what, maybe like six times out of ten, I'll be right. But and because of that, I think when with a with a tonal language like Chinese or or, or Thai, um, and I think and correct me if I'm wrong, it, is is Vietnamese a tonal language as well? Um, I don't know if it is actually. It may be. I don't. I don't really know. I I, I thought it was a tonal language, and somebody said it's not. But maybe I'm wrong with that. Okay. I thought it would yeah. be a tonal language. You know. Yeah, I think it, it might be. I can't remember. Um, mm. But I mean, with with all of these homophones, when you've got a different intonation to, to say it with that that resolves that ambiguity right you, you know yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. what the person's talking about um and you just you there are you know those kind of awkward moments when you're speaking japanese where you you're not a hundred percent sure what the other person's <laughs> saying uh -huh. add to that 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 japanese has this thing where they they omit their subject in their All right. sentences uh-huh uh-huh yeah. uh -huh. interesting so if you weren't listening to the first part of the conversation and you kind of just start listening from the middle, you have uh -huh. no idea what they're talking about. Wow, In interesting, interesting. Yeah. Thai, um, the Thai language, they'll, I hear a lot of times they'll actually put their name in instead of the subject, instead of hmm. I, you. They'll actually put someone's name in a lot as well yep. instead of using the subject, which is pretty cool, you know? Mm -hmm. I think w w one thing I've learned, I mean, I've been here for, what, 10 years and uh, I don't speak Thai well at all. 
Yeah. Um, but what, one thing I have learned to do, and I did it in Spain as well, is to learn in sentences or learn in phrases rather mm. than just learn in kind of individual vocabulary, you know. Right. That, that's that's kind of helped, you know. Yeah. Um, and I guess that might, might be the same in Japanese what you're talking about there, is, is, to, is to kind of learn in phrases. Yeah. That, that, yeah. You're going to be using them a lot more. We, for for every time that you moved, did you uh -huh. kind of um, have enough time to prepare for that move? You know, did did you have time to kind of learn a little bit of the language before moving to the new country? I think you did <laughs> maybe the the second time you went to Portugal. But what about when you moved to Thailand? You know? Well, I was actually I was in finance when I when I was in Spain, mm -hmm. and I had offices in Bulgaria and Italy, etc. And the finance this was about October. No, this was. About maybe yeah, about October two thousand and eight, and the mm -hmm. markets, the finance and property markets were going down and down and down and down. Mm -hmm. And it was then I started right. Let's let's get all qualified to do teaching. Yeah. And so I did all I did all my qualifications for teaching. Yeah. And I went back to Scotland in May two thousand and nine. Mm -hmm. And by August, I think I was out in Thailand. No, it was be less. Maybe about June, I think I was. I came out to Thailand. So it was about a month. Mm -hmm. I thought, let's go. No preparation. Let's go. You know, so I think it's better. I think if you, right. if you prepare too much, for me, I think if I prepare too much, I'm going to overthink. I'd rather just kind of jump in and see what happens, you know. Did, didn't, you know, didn't you feel nervous um, or afraid? I mean, did, did you have absolutely no fear at all? You know, just moving to this new country, new, new culture, new language? Not at all. No, I think when you're young, it was, it, when I'm young. When you're young, it's kind of like, <laughs> no, I think you've just got to have a little bit of, I think if you're going to travel, you're going to travel, you know. Mm -hmm. I've never been one for for going on tour groups or package tours or anything. When I went to, yeah. I remember I went to Hong Kong in 1996 or seven for about a month and I just had a backpack and I just stayed in hostels. I didn't know where I was, what I was doing or anything and just... Just, just what happened, what happened, you know? And wow. when I first came to Thailand, it was the same. So no, so when I came to Thailand, it was like, right, what shall I do? I don't know yet. We'll wait and see. So how, you know, how, how what, what percentage or what proportion of the population in Thailand? And you, you live in Bangkok, which is the capital, right? Yeah. Um, you know, roughly what percentage of people you meet on the street would be able to communicate in English? Um... <laughs> You know something, one thing I've found is um, they really, really want to speak English, but mm. they're either too shy or they've never had a native English speaker to speak with. Right. And so most of them, most people will know the basics, the numbers, food, um, yes and no, this kind of thing. So most of them, but at first it was really difficult because I didn't understand anything. What, you know, if, if it went off course a little bit, I didn't yeah. understand anything. Yeah. But most people, certainly in Bangkok, they will, they will understand. Because a lot of the traffic signs, the road signs are in English and in Thai. You yeah. know, and English is, there, there was a big push for, for everyone to, to speak English out here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people do. I mean, most, there's only really one city in Thailand, and that's Bangkok, and it's where everyone comes, you know. Yeah. So it's very cosmopolitan. Everyone, everyone knows a little bit of English at least, you know. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know they get a lot of tourists there as well. So, um, like, I, I was watching this documentary some time ago um, about how the number one, I guess, uh, foreign tourist destination for Australians was Thailand. Oh, really? Cause, yeah, because they've got, uh, and I think it was, it was either Thailand or Bali, but those were like the mm. top two. And it's yeah, just because yeah. they, you know, one is, is proximity. They're they're not, you know, both of those destinations are really close to Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then there's uh, the exchange rate. You know, once they actually get there, um, it's, <laughs> it doesn't cost a whole lot to, to party and, and have fun. Yeah. And, then, and they've got lots of um, low-cost low airlines, uh, budget airlines flying, you know, yeah, yeah, almost, yeah. I think almost every day from every major airport in, in yeah, Australia. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's... Uh, it's understandable why it's a hot spot. Yeah. One thing about Thailand, though, is um, mm. it seems that one of um, 
Thailand's, uh, I guess, biggest draws is that it's very easy to get um, performance enhancing drugs uh, <laughs> just just over the counter with no no prescription, um, or and even recreational drugs. It's it's very easy to get your hands on them. Uh huh. So there there are a lot of people who who go on the um, I, I guess the the high. Yeah, thing. I think they're cracking down on a lot of things because it's a kind of military junta out here now, and uh, you know, and I think one thing that I really love about Thailand is also the one thing that I don't like, and and it's the freedom. Mm. You know, um, anyone can do what they want, mm. which is great, but also at the same time. You know, it's not great at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. so I can see why a lot of people will will come to Thailand. Uh, will come to Thailand, and you've got to be really careful, to be honest. You know, uh, you know, it's very easy to slip into the kind of party mode and get lost forever into the black hole, party hole, black hole. You know. Yeah. Um. So I kind of came out of that. You know, I didn't. Yeah. End up staying well away from that. You know. Yeah, well, 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 you're now, you know, there. It's it's been ten years. Yeah. Um. Do you do you plan to stay there for much longer? Or is there? Do you have another destination on? You know. On, yeah, I'm I'm quite homesick at about? the moment. I really, I really, I'm missing Scotland. I haven't been home. I haven't. I left Scotland fifteen years, sixteen years now, mm -hmm. and uh, I miss my mum and dad and and everything. You know, so maybe I'll go back. And of course, there's a big thing in Scotland at the moment with independence from England and everything. So. It's quite. Uh, I'm, okay. I, we'll see what I, happens with that. I didn't know that. I had no idea. I'm oh, living yeah, in a yeah, cave. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's been going on for a few years. Uh, you know, uh, okay. they voted about five years ago to stay with England, and now right. it's kind of blown up again. And I think more and more people are seeing right. Let's let's move away. Yeah. So, do so, you miss haggis and iron brew? I miss. <laughs> I'm actually vegetarian now. You know, since I've been out here. I went, I went to Peru about three years ago with my friend Dom, who I think is mm -hmm. watching this, and uh, I became vegetarian. I went into the Amazon jungle for a month and came out vegetarian. And uh, so I, I, vegetarian haggis, maybe when I get back, I will have. But... <laughs> wow. Um, you, I, so just to clarify what you were saying about mm. Scotland. Mm. So, so Scotland wants... Uh, or the people in Scotland want to separate from the UK. So instead of it being the UK, it's going to be Scotland as an independent country? Well, it's an independent country at the moment. There's just like a political union between England and Scotland going back right. okay. 1707. Mm -hmm. um, but Scotland has about 8% of the population. England has obviously 90 odd. And uh, about five years ago, there was a big referendum and mm. uh, it went from 20% to say staying in, in the UK, uh, sorry, to, to want independence. And it went mm -hmm. up to 45% within a couple of months. Wow. And uh, eventually they said, right, we'll stay with England. England promised, well, West, um, UK promised X, Y, and Z for Scotland. Mm -hmm. But it's never worked out that way. Mm -hmm. And so most people now, especially with Brexit and everything that are, yeah. Scot Scotland saying, look, this is crazy. You know, we're mm -hmm. going to, we're wanting out. I think more and more people are wanting. So we'll see what happens, you know. Um, yeah. I think a lot, of, there's been a lot of countries that's gained independence from England. So I think Scotland might be next, I hope. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, we have, well, a, we have, uh, a, we have uh, a lot of uh, natural resources, you know, like wind and wind power and tidal power and kind of oil right. as well. So we've got a lot of natural resources, you know, so right. I don't see any reason why we, why we um, can't be on our own, you know. That's There's one of my right. students, Mine, hello Mine, one of my students from my school just, just gave me oh, a little cool. wave, you know. <laughs> well, uh, hello, Ken student. Mine, Mine, Mine. <laughs> so yeah, so. Mm. That's, that's kind of interesting. It's kind of um, somewhat similar to Brunei's story. So Br I don't Brunei. know anything about Brunei, you know. Oh man, it's a it's a pretty cool story. Um, I wouldn't say Brunei is worth visiting. I shouldn't uh -huh. be saying. I mean, I hope hope nobody from Brunei is watching this. But <laughs> um, how do I put it? So the the language in Brunei is the same as Malaysia. Um, the oh, weather, really? yeah, the the weather and mm. the climate is the same as Malaysia. Uh -huh. The food is the same as what you get in Malaysia. Uh huh. So it there's not really 
anything unique. Why, you... why the close connection? Why? Uh, okay, um, so Brunei actually shares a border with Malaysia. Ah, right, I see, right, okay. So um, Brunei, there's, in the, in the middle of Southeast Asia, there's Borneo, the, the big yep. ass island, right? <laughs> and so most of that island, probably like 60% of it is, is Kalimantan, which is a, an Ind Indonesian state. Uh -huh. And then whatever's remaining, probably about 90% of what's remaining is all Malaysia, uh, two Malaysian states, Sabah and Sarawak. Right. Uh -huh. And then kind of sandwiched about, you know, 5,000 square kilometers, um, sandwiched in between those two Malaysian states is Brunei. All and right. Uh -huh. it's, it's barely even the size of a city. Um, so it's, uh -huh. it's kind of embarrassing to call it a country, but it is. It's an independent <laughs> country. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And I think... And even the, if kind of looking at the history of Malaysia, Malaysia was uh, originally, it was a, a, a number of independent states. So yeah, yeah. Every, every state in Malaysia was actually an independent country. It was a kingdom uh, mm. and each one has its own sultan. Uh -huh. So I think at when, I think when, uh, at, or at when the British colonization ended uh -huh. um, and when Malaysia decided, you know, let's, let's become a country, um, I think it was kind of a call for all of the states to unite as, uh -huh. as one country. And Singapore was one of those states that, that mm. also was originally part of that, but then later right. on they broke off. Uh -huh. um, and I think Brunei was, was the only one that decided not to be a part of that. Mm. And it kind of makes sense because they, they have plenty of oil and they probably just <laughs> didn't want to share all that <laughs> with, with everyone else. Uh -huh. <laughs> So is, is, that your, is that your main kind of output, really, for Brunei is oil, is it? Yeah, yeah. I, I heard from somebody uh, here who works in the oil and gas industry here that up to 70% of Japan's natural gas, liquid natural gas, comes from Brunei. All right. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And, wow. And when I was in school, when we were studying about this in primary school, um, mm. I remember that they, they taught us that Japan was uh, one of the main countries that Brunei exports to. So, yeah, I guess, uh -huh. yeah. It all checks out. <laughs> all right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh huh. Excellent. Yeah. So, how, how did you get into teaching? This was my first job after university. Um, all right. Uh huh. I, I studied aviation management. So you, you and I, we wow, have that, we go. have that yeah. in common. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and I just couldn't get a job in the industry. So, um, teaching English was my backup option. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of applied for the job anyway, and and just thought, you know, what the hell. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. And uh -huh. the only interview that I got called in to, called in for was was the English teaching job in Japan. All right. Uh huh. Um, this was in 2012. Um, so yeah, I I needed a job. I needed to you know to to sustain myself at least for a little bit because yeah yeah my you know my parents had forked out quite a a generous sum for my for my university. So I didn't really yeah, want to yeah, say. Yeah. No, mom, dad, I can't get a job. I, I, I want to go to, you know, uh, postgraduate school or something. You know, I just didn't want to do that. So you have, to show, you have to have something to show for it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, it's a job. It's going to pay the bills. New country, new language, new experience. Let's do it. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, how long have you been in Japan now, did you say? Uh, I've spent a total of two and a half years here. Right, right. Uh -huh. um, so after a year and a half of teaching here, um, uh -huh. I decided I didn't want to teach kids. Or I didn't want to work with kids at all. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Oh, man, little nightmares. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Um, I, I know. I, was, I used to work with people who, who loved it, they, you know, and they, they loved everything about it, you know. But uh -huh. you know, I got, I had, yeah, it's, amazing how, it's amazing how two people can have the same experience at one one person can love it the other person completely hate it yeah. i was i was the latter so <laughs> um, join the club join the club yeah. dude. <laughs> so I, I wanted i wanted other options so i moved mm. to I, I moved to malaysia i thought you know i'm gonna do engineering i've, uh -huh. got, I've got an aviation degree i'm gonna get an engineering degree i'm gonna put them together and yeah, i'll be yeah. unstoppable and mm -hmm. uh well yeah i spent four years in malaysia studying engineering <laughs> And then wow. after, after, after the end of the, after the four years, I moved back to Japan and here I am now. I, I, I'm not working yeah, in engineering cool. and I, I don't work as an English teacher uh, here either. Um, I only teach online. All right. Uh-huh. Um, right, uh -huh. 
but I'm not work. You know, I'm not working in engineering. I'm doing. I'm in business development at a car company. All right. So, okay, it, cool. <laughs> I'm I'm not complaining. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's it's kind of my dream job. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh, I always wanted to work with cars, so I'm I'm happy. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Perfect. Now. With your bikes, with your cars, with your engineering degree, fantastic, no? Yeah, yeah. So that's Excellent. that. Um, we've got like two minutes before we're gonna get. Um, wow. We're gonna get kicked off. Thrown off this yes. live. <laughs> okay, David, no problem. Ken, I, I got one last thing I want to ask you. Please, yes. Before we go, mm -hmm. um, you were right about the internet becoming a thing back in 1998. So I've got to ask you right now, if you're right about that, you're probably right about whatever it is that you're thinking about right now. What's the next big thing to blow up, in your opinion? Voice, voice, voice. That's voice. it. I'll be, voice, absolutely. Voice. It's going to replace everything. Voice, voice. Alexa, is going to, et cetera, is going to take off like nothing on earth over the next three years. Watch me. Watch it. Get involved right. in voice. That's All the of the thing. entrepreneurs listening to this right now, people who've got tons of money, <laughs> you want to invest it in something, you don't know what to do. Voice don't, recognitions. Don't take this as investment advice. You've got to make your own decisions. <laughs> but, uh, but, well, you can go up and down, right? That's right. <laughs> but, but, but I'll just say, Ken was right about the internet. So, you know, you put two and two together. And <laughs> Come up with make five. Your, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ken, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. David, it's been great to see you. It's been great to speak with you, yeah? We need to do it again sometime, right? I would love that. And, and I, I'm really glad we got to do this. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Pleasure. I'll speak to you soon, hopefully, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Take care. Have a wonderful night. Take care. And, uh, you too, David. Talk to you soon. Take care, my friend. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.